Hi everybody, I'm Stefan, and in this video I want to review for you Piano Safari. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. Also, I offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information below. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you to my Patreons who keep supporting this channel. You can see their names on the screen now. If you would like to join them, there's going to be links to that below too. For a long time, I've received questions about Piano Safari because I haven't actually reviewed them on my channel and I've reviewed a lot of piano methods. And there's two reasons for that. One is because I didn't know too much about the method. I haven't had the book. And once I got the books and I really went through quite a few times back and forth, trying to look for the pros and cons, I realized that I would never want to use these books with anyone. However, I want to keep this review extremely objective, as objective as I can, because I know that in the right context, within the right circumstances, the books could be really good because they have amazing ideas in it, but they also have very big uh, issues with them. And I want to shed light onto both of these areas, what are the things that are really great about these books and what are the things that I personally find would not work and why I would suggest other method books instead of Piano Safari. So let's see some basics. So Piano Safari, um, I mean, obviously the name is really nice and the books all kind of have uh, animal themes from the safari and it's all based around animals and these animals teach you technique and blah 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 so anyway the design is quite nice now the, the main thing that people talk about when it comes to these books is the road pieces and the price so i want to address these two first the price of the books is really expensive so this one is for children under the age of 10 and this is the starter pack, the basic pack, which is the repertoire book and the sight reading cards. So they come together in one pack. And this one is $55 for level one. Given the fact that many other children's methods are around six, seven dollars or nine dollars, I think 55 is quite a huge increase, even though you know there are a lot of resources that you can use for that money. But I will let you know in a minute why I think it is very expensive. The adult version, or not adult, uh, I shouldn't say adult, this one is for anyone above the age of 10, so it's for the older beginner. Now again, saying that this is for the older beginner, which is 10 plus, is extremely vague. An 11 year old is not going to learn the same way as a 25 year old or as a 50 year old. So I think older beginner and adult should be kind of separated, not just for the way we teach them, but also for the kind of repertoire they enjoy playing. There is not too much difference between a 10 and an 11 year old. I know they have to draw the line somewhere, but I would always do something like under the age of seven, under the age of eight, which is very childlike, and then something between the ages of eight and 12. And I think 13, 14 year olds can handle the same books as adults. I know this is a very strong generalization, but I would rather separate method books into young beginners, kind of uh, early teens and late teens together with the adults. So anyway, that, that's the two kinds. And this one, the starter pack comes with two books. One is repertoire and technique and the other one is sight reading and theory. And that's the starter pack. And this one is $40. Now I think this is slightly cheaper in the UK because I paid 28 pounds for that one and 22 for the adult one or older beginner and that works out cheaper in dollars. But anyway, these are the prices that I saw on Amazon and that's usually the cheapest you can get them at. Now, why did I say that the price is quite expensive? So what you need to understand about this book is that if you are trying to learn by yourself without a teacher, forget about these books. They are a complete fail if you want to learn by yourself because the book 80% of the book relies on a teacher showing you everything because it doesn't give you the tools to read the pieces that you are supposed to learn from the book. And these are the rote pieces. And rote means that you learn something by imitation. So either looking at the hands of your teacher or listening to the notes and trying to memorize the melody. But the point is that most of the pieces in this book are rote pieces. So you have to memorize them 
by watching someone else do them. And that doesn't really work well with videos because someone has to actually show it to you slowly, has to point out your mistakes, where you're going wrong. So you can't really do that with a video, especially when it's quite complex, even at the beginning stages. So if this book was made for people who learn by themselves and it has all the resources that you don't actually need to pay for expensive lessons, then I would say $50 is okay because it's, it's like an all-in-one course. But because the book is completely useless if you don't have a teacher, from that point of view, I think it's really expensive because you still have to pay for those lessons. And if you pay for those lessons, then you can get much cheaper books that will teach you the same thing just as well. That's about the price. The ecosystem of Piano Safari has a lot of books. So they have the core books, which is the sight reading technique and repertoire and the theory. The older beginner and standard come in three levels, level one, level two, and level three. And for each level, you've got a plethora of supplementary books, like nice technical exercises with the animals. You've also got guest composers, really good composers writing very interesting pieces. So I would say the supplementary books are really nice that come but obviously I'm not talking about those when I talk about the price those are things that you have to buy extra before getting too negative because I don't want to be too negative about it because it's getting a lot of positive reviews and positive traction I want to talk about the positives the two biggest positives of the book are the road pieces, which can be a negative at the same time. I will get to this later. But for many beginners, especially when we start teaching piano, one of the biggest challenges is that when we can't read too many notes, we are very limited in what we can play and the music might not sound very inspiring or it might sound very boring. So if you try to teach someone on their second piano lesson a nice tune, you simply can't because they don't have the tools to be able to read the notes or the rhythms. So when when you try to do road pieces, depending on the ability of the student, because if they don't pick things up very quickly just by listening or watching, you're really going to struggle with the road pieces. But if they do pick them up quickly, then even in the first few lessons, they can play really nice stuff that otherwise they could never play because they simply don't have the tool set for it yet. But you have to remember, in order to teach road pieces, you have to repeat that piece with the student over and over and over again until they memorize it completely. And the problem with these road pieces is that some of them are actually really long and very complex, rhythm-wise as well. So thinking of my students, I can't imagine that most of them would be able to memorize one piece every lesson because if I don't reinforce it the next day and they don't practice the next day or the day after and there's no one at home to show it to them how to do it correctly, they would forget it by day three and the next time when they come back for the lesson we would have to start all over again. So you need to give some resources for the students. You either have to give a recording so they can hear it when they practice by themselves or you have to give them a video where you show how you play the piece so they can copy you. So it's not quite as simple as it looks but anyway that's one of the good things that you can play much nicer things right at the start. The second thing that I like about the book is that the sight reading aspect, when you actually start reading notes, which is very far in the book, you do so much sight reading with intervals, like uh, I think an entire unit, like 20, 30 pages are dedicated to, to reading steps and another 30 pages are dedicated to reading skips. And then in the last chapter, you finally combine steps and skips and you try to mix them up and, and read them continuously. Now, we all know that these are the two most important building blocks of reading music, steps and skips, because all melodies are more or less made up of these two intervals. We obviously have bigger ones, but most nice melodies have a lot of steps and skips in them. So understanding that crucial relationship between notes is very important right at the start. Now you could say that 40 pages of just steps is going to be extremely limiting again with what kind of pieces you can play if you can only go in steps and no other intervals. And that's true and that's why the book is using road pieces but in the road pieces you're playing every interval not just step. That's something that already is a red flag in my head like how can the student play all these intervals but only understand one of them. So both of these things could be a big positive but also a negative in certain contexts. The third thing that I like is that there's quite a, a big emphasis on technique. They, they explain technique quite well from very early on weight of the arm, legato, non legato, in the first book, there's a lot of emphasis put on technique. 
And the book, uh, to be fair, is quite long. The level one is 132 pages. And normally most level one books for children are around 30, 40 pages. So it's longer, you get more for your money, but it's still very expensive because the, the problem is that by the time you get to the end of the piece, your reading is still not gonna be any more advanced than someone who only did um, a 30 page book of let's say Piano Adventures or Alfred or Bastion or whichever other method. And finally, obviously when it comes to the look of the book and the animals and the kind of fun style pieces, it should be more engaging to young children. I think that's not the case for older beginners. They're not gonna be thrilled about the coffee, coffee, tea and monkey hopping and all of those songs, but young children will enjoy these and we live in a time when it's harder and harder to keep children engaged and to keep them paying attention throughout the lesson because they get so easily distracted. And when they practice in the afternoons, they have their phones, their iPads, and their attention span sometimes can be very, very short. So anything that can get them to pay more attention and be more interested is a good thing. Now let's come to the negatives, or let me say not negatives, but things that I think could be a problem or that are not necessarily a positive for me. As I said, I, I'm trying not to project my own vision onto this, but I am doing this review so I can only talk for myself, but I can see the good things in it, but I can see a lot more bad things in it. So we talked already about the price, and just another thing, the entire book is black and white, so if you pay $50 for a book, you would expect at least some colorful drawings in it. You know, the $5 books have colorful drawings in them, so why could they not make this colorful? It's a safari. You're supposed to see the colors of the animals. You're supposed to see vibrant colors. Why is the entire book black and white and barely any color? And even the black and white pictures are kind of faded. That's one thing I was a bit disappointed about. Now, the second thing is, if I come to just a random page, it looks very, very busy. I know that this is supposed to be the teacher's part, but you see a lot of notes, a lot of stuff, and children are inevitably going to ask, what is that, what is that, what does that mean? And you're not supposed to explain because it's a road piece, so you just have to show it to them, but still have the book in front of them. So I kind of feel that it's pointless to have all of these pieces in the book and make the children pay for it when you could have a teacher's book. And if they don't need to read, if they don't even need to look at the book, then what's the point of having those pieces in the book? The book could be 30 pages, that's roughly what's reading in this book, it could be $6 and you could have a teacher's version which has all the road pieces and the teacher could teach all the students from that one book. So again, I think this is kind of a wasted paper and a lot of money for nothing because the child itself is not going to benefit from 70% of the book because they simply can't read it and they can't use it at home unless they have an older sibling who can play piano or parents can help them. But we can't assume that when we have a young beginner that there's going to be someone to help them. We have to find a method that we can teach them without any outer help because that's the basis. If we can't teach them without any outer help, then we basically are relying on the parent or the older sibling to get through the method. And that's not very good because parents are busy and they shouldn't by default play piano. That's why they pay for lessons. So you teach them, not them at home. And the same applies to the older beginner book, the adult book, that most of the pieces, like 60, 70% of the book, you simply won't be able to do by yourself. Somebody has to show it to you. So I feel like it's completely pointless to have it in the book. Let's have a look at the beginning of the book. A, a few things that, again, I found very disappointing is that on the very first page, we get whole notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes. I feel like for a first lesson, understanding all of these note values is very difficult. I get it that the book wants to introduce eighth notes before you even know how to count them just by using rhythm syllables, which is amazing, but Mixing too much right at the start is never a good idea because students first have to solidify the relationship between quarter note and half note and then eighth note and quarter note because otherwise, you know, they can say the syllables but are they going to say the syllables in the right time or are they going to just say the syllables and play at whatever tempo or speed they choose? If you follow my reviews, you know that I cannot stand books which sit a very long time on pre-staff uh, reading, which basically means that we've got these endless pages of pieces where you've got just numbers and you're supposed to play these notes by the numbers. 
So it's good for rhythm because you can focus on the rhythm section, but the first actual notes that you read are on page 62. So you have to get through 62 pages, almost half a year, before you read your very first note in the staff, which is C and G. And my biggest problem, again, is that until the end of level one, so for 130 pages, you're going to do nothing but start every piece on C or G because that's the only two notes that you're going to learn in this book. You're going to learn about steps and skips and you'll be able to work your way. So once you know that this is a G starting note, you can play the entire piece as long as they move by step or skip. But if the piece starts on A or if the piece starts on F or if the piece starts on D, you simply can't start it because the book doesn't teach you those notes. And I think that's really unnecessary. I understand that they want to create landmark notes, which is is a very good idea to start teaching notes but having 130 pages and only recognizing two notes from 88 keys is is not great and I think it's a waste of time they could have done so much more than that in the book what I read on the website is that this book is supposed to be finished in around one year or two terms or with very good beginners maybe six months if you do this book for an entire year and you get to the end of it and you can only read two notes and the pieces that you can actually read are extremely basic, just with steps and skips. You don't understand anything about chords. And this applies to the older beginner as well. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Then I think that was a very long journey to get only so far. Now, let's talk about this, which could be amazing, the sight reading cards. So for, for each level, you've got these um, cards which are color coded for each chapter. These sight reading cards all have two melodies, one for the right hand, one for the left hand, and a rhythm sight reading exercise. Now, I would say this would be the only thing that I would actually buy and use with my students. I think every teacher needs more sight reading material, and what we have in method books is not really enough. Now, these ones are all really simple, but the more you have, the better your reading is going to be, and the more you're going to establish that relationship of uh, the step, or the second, and the third, the skip. And the rhythm exercises are really great if you know how to count them. So, I think this is a great thing. Now, here is the negative. The first half of the side readings, these cards, look how many, at least half of them, I would put these straight into the bin. Why? Because these side reading cards have just numbers on them. So you are supposed to read all of these melodies just by looking at finger numbers. That is not sight reading. The whole point of sight reading is to read rhythms and notes. Making the student reliant on finger numbers is going to be even worse later on because then if you do 120 exercises of sight readings where you only rely on finger numbers, it's going to result in the fact that when you actually do a sight reading, you're going to look for those finger numbers because you're gonna be completely lost with the notes. So. A great idea, very bad first half for the cards. And the only thing I would use from here is, again, the rhythm section, because you can do that without um, the notes. Now, when it comes to counting, the book doesn't actually show you how to count. Uh, it shows you the rhythm syllables, the ta, ta, ti, and ta, tu, and ta, two, three, four. But when you actually get to time signatures, you are told by the book, just start counting these bars and it gives you eighth notes and it gives you quarter notes, but it doesn't actually show you how to count. It, it doesn't show you that you, whether you need to do one, two, three, whether you need to do one and two and three and, whether you're supposed to do one, two and three or one, ta, ti, three. It doesn't show you any of that. Nothing is written under the notes. So again, you're 100% relying on the teacher to show you all of those things. And I know I've been ranting about this for so long, but this was one of the main reasons why I didn't want to review these books because I simply feel that the ideas behind were so great, but this insane reliance on the teacher and someone at home is going to make it impossible for anyone to learn from it who doesn't have that kind of help. Now, let's have a look at the older students. So one thing that I read is that they are supposed to have almost identical teaching material in the older and the child version. But this one apparently has more sophisticated themes, whatever that means. Here, obviously, it's a vertical format, slightly smaller. And what I noticed is that this level one progresses much, much quicker than that one. The pre-staff notation is much shorter than in the child version. 
and by the end of it there are some more complex pieces. Now most of the pieces are the exact same in both books, but there are some more complex pieces by the end of it. So I'm wondering if you if this one finishes at a slightly more advanced stage than that level one, what's going to happen in level three? Is level three all the students much harder than level three kids edition or do they kind of level up when you get to level three? I only have level one so I can't speak for level two and level three but uh, I noticed that this one does go at a faster pace but the explanation is, is the same, the road pieces are the same and most of the pieces are the same so not extremely inspiring material inside but I have to admit the road pieces do sound very good but you are reliant on your teacher and memorization. So it's, it doesn't mean that by the end of this book you can play those pieces or similar pieces by reading. You can only copy someone. Now, in the very end of this video, let me talk a little bit about when this book would be great, when this book wouldn't be great. Well, I've seen many YouTubers talk about this book uh, and many piano studios use this book very successfully. One person that raves about this book is Nicola from Colorful Keys. If you are watching her channel, you know that. And the main thing that I want to point out here is that there are many, many different kinds of music studios. Her music studio is kind of an alternative way of learning piano. It's all built around fun. There are buddy lessons, there are a hundred thousand games that they use as part of the lessons. She doesn't care so much about piano exams. If somebody really wants it, they will do it, but it's not a priority by all means. So in this kind of environment where music is all about fun, having fun and uh, being all colorful and vibrant, and engaging the interest, I think this book works really well because you don't need to worry about the pace. There's no one pushing you to do grade one by the end of year one or year two and you don't compete with anyone else, you basically just care about yourself. If you teach more traditional piano or if you have those kind of students whose parents are really looking for results very quickly or children are very driven, they will find these books very boring and if you want to prepare people for ABRSM exams or any kind of exams, it's going to be a very, very long time before you can even get to grade one with this style of teaching because the reading material is so slow in the books. My style of teaching is more influenced by traditional piano teaching so I like to go with more traditional books, I like to follow a more traditional path and I know it might not work for everybody but people who choose me want to go on that path and that's why my channel is not based on doing pop songs and watching you know my fingers and these popping colors. There are so many channels like that and there's nothing wrong with them. If someone wants those they can follow those channels but I'm about reading, I'm about music, understanding theory behind understanding technique and that's a very different kind of path. Another big thing that comes in with these books is, I mentioned this already, but if you have someone in the family who plays piano, your parents or your sister, your brother or your partner, if you're an adult learner, and they can sit with you, then you're going to learn really cool pieces right at the very start. But if you don't have that kind of support and you're simply relying on a, on a weekly lesson or even worse, if you have one lesson every two weeks, you're never going to finish that book because you have to rely on those 30 minutes or 45 minutes and you have to repeat the piece 15, 20 times before you can memorize it and go home and play it. And then you have to wait until your next lesson for two weeks before you can play anything else because simply you can't read those kind of pieces yet. So all in all, if you're looking at a very fun kind of alternative learning experience, not the traditional kind of piano playing, you have help around you, then the book can be an amazing choice. If you have no help around you, you want to learn by yourself or you are looking for a more fast paced traditional way of learning the piano, then do not get these books. It's not gonna work. Now, I hope this video was not too biased, although as I said, it's my opinion, but I wanted to really talk about the pros and cons because some of the good things can be a negative and some of the negatives for me can be a positive for someone else. If you have any more questions about Piano Safari, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. As always, subscribe for more.